Hi, I'm Paul Shriver of Synthesis Technology here at Knobcon 2019 to do, introduce our new Kickstarter project, the 520 Hyperion Audio Processor. It's going to be launching on November the 15th, and it will be under $600 depending on if you get an early bird special or not. So it will be available in black and silver for the same price. It will ship around April, May of next year. And what it is is an evolution of our 560 deflector shield and 580 resampling delay combined into one unit with added effects but in stereo. Those are mono effects with stereo out so we're going to do stereo in, stereo out and also have the ability to have individual effects on both left and right channel. Alright so what we're going to have is a demo with our breadboard. So as you can see this is a very large board that we use to develop the hardware and software. It's the reason it's this large is so we have room so we can actually probe our parts because in production most of these parts are located underneath the display. But it's very hard to debug it when they're under the display at this stage of the game. So what we have here is we have many pots and jacks that not all are necessarily going to be used on the, on the final unit. But we want to make sure that we have enough I.O for our new processor, which is an ST-Micro 32-bit ARM running 480 megahertz. It's called an H7. And we're going to decide later on because the final unit will be 48 HP wide. And it's specifically designed into a 4 milliseconds powered skip. So part of the Kickstarter is you'll be able to buy a skiff and a Hyperion. And you do have to assemble it yourself but you'd be able to get a discount than if you bought them separately at retail. So the first algorithm I'm going to show, and you have to forgive us because this is less than two weeks of work, is the 560 deflector shield. And so you can see from the screen, it has the same controls as a deflector shield with the addition of when we have carrier morphine, we can now display that carrier morphine in real time like this. So we have four parameters that we can control. Now this one only uses three because the original deflector shield only used three. We also have four programmable buttons. And right now we always use the fourth button as a bypass. Something that's lacking in most Eurorack effects modules is a simple bypass. And so what we do with our bypass is that we actually fade in and out from wet to dry. So it takes a few milliseconds to do, but there's no pops or clicks. So first we're going to play a very simple note, some high harmonic content, and it's going to sound like this. Kind of like a bell tone. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply the basic use of the 560, which is mono in, stereo out. And we do that by up shifting on one side and down shifting in the other side, and then we mix the original in the middle. So you get a little ensemble effect like a detuning. Now remember a frequency shifter shifts in hertz. It's not chromatic like a pitch shifter. So let's hear what that sounds like. So if we take the carrier, and what you hear is that 2 hertz, well that 2 hertz is the beating between the left and right speakers, right? So it's like the oscillator dutini. So we're going to move that to something faster. And those are called sidebands. And since we have four parameters, they're all voltage controlled, we have some LFOs, and I'm just going to hook an LFO up to that carrier. I'm going to center the carrier around zero. And again, as a comparison, that's the original signal. 
So this is the first algorithm that we did because I know our customers are familiar with this algorithm. We want to make sure that we can re reproduce it, but unlike the codecs that are used in our original designs, we have now 24-bit, 96 kilohertz sample rate parts. We're going to run our audio right now at 48 kilohertz, and uh, because we want the extra processing power that's needed, so we're running stereo 24-bit. 48 kilohertz all the time. Now in a lot of these algorithms, especially in the delays, we actually change the sample rate, but our output audio always runs at 48 kilohertz. So another algorithm that people are familiar with, is I'm gonna go back here, is our 580 resampling mini delay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that down and in the 580, we, did, we had to use the memory inside of our chip. So we could only do delays up to a quarter of a second to three quarters of a second. However, with new outside memory, this chip right here, we can actually delay in stereo for 22 minutes. Not that you would want to delay for 22 minutes, but we can do it. So if you notice right here, it says, here's our delay time. And there's our quarter of a second that we've always had. And so if you change the delay time, so there's our one second to roughly a quarter of a second. It's a little bit longer, but that's kind of what the 580 does. But now we have a range switch. So now we can toggle it, and all of a sudden, we can go 16 times the range. So now based on the sample rate again, we can go all the way up now we're up to 20 seconds. Let's do it again. 256 times. All right, so there we are going up to five minutes. I don't know if that's necessarily useful right now, but it's just a demonstrator to show you what the hardware can do. So let's go back to a standard delay. You notice that we can do is this rotates around, go back to a standard mini delay. We can change the sample rate and we have a tap offset. Again, all these controls are exactly like on the standard 580. Notice right here we have a grayed out area. That's because on the fourth parameter, what we're going to do is change things that we cannot change on the 580. They're fixed in software. And that's what we call the mode. So this is our bucket brigade delay. We also have the roll and tape echo delay. So what can we change with this parameter? We can change on the tape delay, we can do the wow and flutter and the warble. And then on the BBD delay, we're gonna change the noise and the filter cutoff. Unfortunately, we're unable to code that for this demo, but that's why we grade it out. But you'll be able to do that in the future. So let's hear what this sounds like. So this is the original. that delay. Notice when I change the sample rate, it changes the pitch. That's the resampling algorithm. longer now. There it is. So that takes care of the two modules that we've been shipping for the last eight or nine years. So what else can we do? Well, right now we're saying to ourselves, it's not what we can do, it's what we're not going to do. So what we're not going to do is reverb. So that's the first thing people ask is, oh goodness, it's a new reverb processor. I go, no, we're not going to do reverb. That's because reverb's been done 
for years and years and years. Plus, it's very hard to voltage control reverb. And so I've decided I can spend a whole year of development and maybe be half as good as a lexicon, or I can spend half that time and do what we do best, which is everything but reverb. So then we're going to make t-shirts, everything but reverb. So like what kind of things? Well, we talked about the frequency shifter not being harmonic or chromatic. So let me just kind of lean in here. Going through the things. There's our phase shifter. So this is the other algorithm we're kind of proud of. This is a pitch shifter like the Eventide harmonizer from long ago. Except what this is, it's a pitch shifter that has variable grain size on the splicing. So when you do a pitch shift, you have a read buffer that you read it at a constant rate. I mean, sorry, a write buffer at a constant rate and a read buffer at a variable rate. But when the read and write buffer pointers cross, you get a glitch and you have to do a splice in and out. So what we do is that we have a variable grain size, which is the length of the splice. So if you think of a tape splice, we can make it short or long. And what that does is it gets rid of the flutter. Because when you do a large pitch shift, you're going to have a lot of flutter. So let's just do a little demo of that. Just to go back, here's the original signal. And let's just do a pitch shift. I'm going to try to set this manually. Okay. I'm going to shift up around 300 cents. In the production model, we're going to have different ranges. This will be quantized into intervals. But this is just to show it working. So here's that shift. And you're saying, I, I'm hearing like two noise. Okay, that's the splicing. So we're going to just take the grain size. You hear that modulation right there? So you can kind of sit there and tune that out. Like right there. Now, if you change the amount that you shift, it changes that again. We also have some chaos that we can kind of move that splice point around and that tends to not make it go wah, wah, wah so much. So let's put an LFO in that shift. So unlike the frequency shifter, when you hear this thing sweeping up and down, it's chromatic. It's not just frequency. So we have this algorithm in there right now. We have stuff like a shimmer. Now the shimmer is what we put in to kind of see how much it would take to do the simplest reverb that we could do. So people who are familiar with shimmer. It's a reverb with a pitch shifter and the feedback loop. So we have a fixed reverb time, high and low pass cut filters to get rid of that high ringing. So let's talk to the original. Let's do just a reverb. Someone turn the shimmer down to zero. All right. So that's your basic all pass reverb and then we're going to add the shimmer which is the feedback path with the shifter in it and so the reflection comes back as a pitch shift Let's make the room time bigger Someone decided to keep that in there because that's a reverb kind. Yeah. So it's everything but shimmer, maybe. 
So that kind of sums up what the Hyperion is about. Right now, we consider this a software and hardware development platform, but by the time we get to Kickstarter, we're going to have lots of demos, studio recorded, lots of different kinds of source material to kind of show you what it can do.